is Framing 101. I'm Camilla. This is Sam Bowie, Hello. our resident framing expert. Uh, if you've been following along with us, you'll know that we've gone through everything that has to do so far with custom framing, from picking your framing to your glass, your mat cuts. Um, and then we also talked a little bit about what it means to frame your uh, pieces archivally and how mm -hmm. to um, use the best practices and make sure what you're doing lasts and it's safe for your artwork and it's going to look good in your home or place of work for years to come. Um, so now for, uh, Sam is going to show us a little bit about how to put it all together. So now we understand all the different pieces yep. um, of how to take ready-made frames and get custom results. Um, he's going to show us how to bring it all together, put some hardware on the back and get it up on the wall. Yep. So tell us a little bit about what we have. All right. Well, we're going to use the same piece we've been using earlier today in all our other episodes, just a pastel drawing. And I've actually got this one mounted to the, or hinged to the mat board. So you can see the hinges on the back. That's archival hinging. Um, there is adhesives against the art, but it is acid-free framers tape, so you're okay there. That's why we can call it arch archival. Worst thing that could happen, the hinge gives way and the art just falls down into your frame and you rehinge it. So we got it to this point. We're gonna put it in the frame. Uh, let me get my glazing. Let's put it back here. We can do it without the glazing, that's all right. So, we have a, uh, there's a piece of glass in here. This is museum glass, ping, 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 ping. You can't even see it. <laughs> if you check out our second episode in the series, Sam actually goes into a lot of detail about how to choose glass, mm -hmm. install glass, yep. how it's gonna affect your art, and how to put some spacers in there so your artwork does not touch it. Yep, but we're just doing the finishing touches now. So we got to this point here, so I have the art. It's all ready to go. Our glass is, glass is in the frame. So I'll put this all down in there, and I'll make sure it's all looks nice and make it in there. Can you put the water on? Sure <laughs> all right, so there's our beautifully framed piece. And that's actually not bad, it looks pretty good. So we're gonna fit it in there now. Um, uh, I should probably get another backing board. Okay, 16 by 20. 16 by 20. And you just get a piece of Pro Foam. Okay. Um, Pro Foam is not, is, it is acid free, but it's a buffered acid free. Uh, in our custom framing department, this is acid free all the way through backing board. It is uh, Elmer's Foam Core. Um, it is acid free, and we actually sell 32 by 40 and 40 by 60 sheets of it on the floor. So if you're doing a lot of pieces, you might want to get a big one. Um, so we're going to build this up. The reason why I'm doing this, this is a gallery wood frame that we sell on the floor. It's our most popular style frame. But if you notice, right where I have the backing board, there's that track. So if I were to try to hold this in with anything but the uh, uh, backing plate, it would just go into that track and it wouldn't work. So I have to build it out a little bit so I can use it. Now I can show them real quick using this. And that just drops in like that. And then I can go ahead and do that and it'd be all done, basically. And, uh, but I'm going to show you guys how to do it. So if you wanted to do it with, say, another frame that we sell on the floor, and open backs don't have these backing boards, so you'll have to hold it into the frame somehow. So we're also gonna. with the glass in there, I imagine it'd be a lot thicker too. It's a lot so. thicker and heavier and all that, yeah. So what I'm doing is I'm just padding this so that I have a section of wood. Can you grab a couple? Oh, sure, another yeah. frame? Yeah, no, oh, another, yes. another board. I'm going to be pointing this in. I got a point driver here. This is what we use in the frame shop. This is a Fletcher point driver. They run about $150 if you wanted to buy one for yourself. Or we got glazing points. These are about three bucks on the shelf. There are 45 of them, so there's plenty to do a piece this big. But to use those or the point driver, the points are still going to go in that groove, so I got to build it up a little bit. And this is just with a gallery wood frame because they're, they're not expecting you to use all this they just want you to use the backing uh turn button backing thing which is fine uh looks like that'll work okay, all right so, work okay i'm good i'm good okay. all right so these are glazing points now these things are difficult to work with i haven't used them in several years i don't have a backsplash for leverage i'm gonna use my hand so i might end up sticking one in the palm so <laughs> It's happened. I'll show you what to do and also what not to do. Right. <laughs> These guys are little demons. Katie, you want to zoom in and get a picture of it? So, and if you guys want to pass that guy around so you'll see how it, how it is. You got, you got a pointy part that'll go into the frame. Then you got two tabs sticking up that are used to uh, push it in. 
So just to give you an idea how I'm gonna just space these out every so often. And this is for to do it yourself. So you guys will know that we sell these products on the floor. This is another Oop pro, uh, product. And I'll show you guys the Oop section as well. This is all, all the framing hardware, your wires, your hooks, and all that sort of stuff. And I don't even know if I got this thing right side up it's in the Oop front. It's the company? Oop. Okay. Yep. Oop. I just thought you nicknamed it something. <laughs> Lineco and Oop are, the, uh, are what we've used today um, as far as... Uh, the mounting strips and, and even the methicellulose wheat paste that I talked to you guys about, that's a line co product. Ook are all your framing hardware products. So I'm just kind of putting a few of these around. And uh, actually I'll use this as the backsplash. The reason why I say use a backsplash is because you have to force them in with a screwdriver and the head of a screwdriver can become magnetic. And I've held the frame like this and pushing those guys like that using this as leverage and my hand slips up because this holds the, the magnet holds the uh, glazing point. It does not feel good. I only did it once. You only do it once. It takes once. <laughs> it only takes once. That's why and I thought to myself I should have put it on the kitchen counter with the backsplash and just push in like that and get leverage that way instead of trying to use my hand. Um, so that's plenty of those. Nervous about this. You got it. You want me to hold the frame to help steady it? Or? No, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it like this so if it does okay. slip. You know what? There you go. See? And also, the screwdriver's not big enough. Let me run get a bigger headed screwdriver real quick. Hopefully, this thing will work. I don't know. This is, this is, uh, um, this is actually to remove these guys. So we'll see if it works here. Yeah, it looks like it's big enough. And it can be tricky to use these things. Yeah, so there you go. go. I got one in, and no damage to me. Thank you. But they are tricky, and you got to make sure you have a wide enough. Uh... And the thing is, you might want to use a tack hammer and a uh, screwdriver to do it, but. I'm able to do this like this forcibly because there's no glass in the frame. If there were glass in the frame and I was pushing down that hard, you're probably going to crack the glass. You do have that rabbit lip right here that you have a little leverage with, but this is not the proper tool. A, a nice flat, um, like maybe even a chisel or something like that that has a wide flat head would be a good thing to use. But basically, it's going in easier than I thought. Mm -hmm. So I'm having flashbacks from the nightmare of sticking one of these in my palm. You should have grabbed a pallet knife. Too thin. It's got to be thick enough. Pallet knives are kind of pliable, so they might bend. Oh, you don't want it to move? Well, it might bend. I mean, the, the blade is so thin. Maybe like a spackle knife or something? Yeah, just some. This work. This is actually working pretty good. And I can, I can demo how it. Uh, if I can get two more in, that'll probably be enough to hold it in. So you're seeing how long this takes. So it's not a quick and easy method. It is very inexpensive. These things are $3 maybe for a pack of 45. Um, and I probably don't need this many of them. But they're going, the wood's kind of soft. Now if I was trying to do this in like oak or coca bola or something like that, I would probably give up. <laughs> oh, they're going straight into the wood? Yeah. I thought they're going in the groove. No, that's why I had to build it up past the groove because the groove's too deep. They wouldn't have gone in and held. They wouldn't have had any bite. So I had to get, get them to where they could bite. Um, and this is all just, uh, this is like the do-it-yourself way to do it. If you guys didn't want to um, fuss with uh, paying a lot of money in custom to do it. It does take a while. But there you go. It held it all in. That's all you would need now. A true fitting, I would come back. These would have been put on last. I would have double sticked around the thing and trimmed and put paper, trimmed that, then screwed these guys in, and then run the wire across. And then we put a little Jerry sticker on the back. These little guys are bump ons, they're really good. Um, they go, I'll show you. They serve two purposes uh, they protect your wall. So the corner of the frame, it might be against the wall and kind of scrape on it or dig at it with the wallpaper, your wall color. 
But if you got these little guys and their bump ons, you only need them at the bottom. Some people ask, well, why don't you put them on the top? Well, your frame is going to be hanging just a little bit off of the wall with the uh, wire. And you don't want the wire tight or it'll really kick back, so you want it a little loose. But the two things that these do is they protect your wall color, and because they're rubber, it's less likely your frame is going to slide back and forth. It'll keep it from, from moving. So that's using the glazing points to do a fitting. Now, if I was using this guy, done. <laughs> so, yeah, and that thing is really tight. Yeah, these are really tight, and it's, it's a gun, but these things are about 150 bucks, and they're this Fletcher which is a, a old frame manufacturer. They make all the old mat cutters and the wall cutters and all that. Um, but uh, that's what the custom framing department uses. We don't use these glazing points because we like to get stuff done fairly quickly. <laughs> and it would just take forever to do, especially we had a giant one and we had to use a hundred of them. We're sitting there for 30 minutes pushing those little guys in. And I got them in pretty good, but they could easily pop right out. So that's how easy they come out. And this sack tool is actually, I bought it in. That's for uh, grabbing those guys and pulling them out. So if you have to unfit something, this is what this tool's for. And it's also a Fletcher. You might need to consider getting Fletcher in there. Uh, right. <laughs> start selling, yeah. I might have to call them up and see about it. So that's just getting it all in there. That's basically fitting now. Uh, as far as the um, hardware and everything goes, I could rewire it. And I can show you guys, I can do that again if you'd like to see it. Oh, I got my wire cutters. So you notice that these are about two thirds the way up the cam, uh, the frame, or one third of the way down. One Why third of the way down, um, because if I put them in the middle, mm -hmm. then you basically got to pivot. Gotcha. If I put them at the bottom, and then it's not going to hang. Right. So it'll you know fall off like that. So you put them a third of the way down at the top. Um, that's probably close to being a third of the way down. But I always just measure from end to end and divide it by three is close if you eye it out. And then I'll go ahead and screw these guys in. Like I told you guys earlier, you gotta be really careful when you're using this type of um, D ring is what it's called. The true D rings actually look like a letter D. And I can show you those over in the uh, in the hook section. Um, but they have a metal bracket and then a loop that pivots. So these are anchored. So, but the D rings can actually move a little bit. So you don't really need to worry about your wire. You gotta have a little slack, but not too much for the D rings because they do pivot. So your frame's not gonna kick out the wall like that if your wire's too tight. It'll give it a little more play. And those are your D rings. You'll have your bump ons. I'll rewire this guy for you. And I guess Camilla went and got some D rings. I sure did. In case you wanna see what they look like. Yeah, and I'll take them out of the pack because I wanna show them a trick about these. You wanna pull one of these out for me? Of course. <clears throat> So again, the D rings are a product, and they come with the screws mm -hmm. and everything, packs of four. Yep. Now, as you can see, they got these little white tabs on there. I don't use that white tab. All that is is to make sure the screw doesn't go anywhere. I don't know if I can get it out without having a screwdriver. But I don't like having those because I'm good. I'm good. I am good i do not like having those white tabs. All they do is keep this unfolds, so it's two pieces of metal folded together with a hole. With this on there, it would stick up, stick out. So I take the white thing off, and it would just sit down just like that, and you'd want run the single screw in there. And you always want to make sure you line up your screw so that the edge of the D ring or whatever your hanging apparatus is doesn't stick out the side so you see it coming off the side you don't want it too close to either edge or you'll split your wood so you want to make sure it's in there and if you're concerned about your wood it might be a good idea to use a leather awl and create a pilot hole to start drilling your, your screw down in there but these guys are also flexible so when when your wire this isn't so i gotta make sure i got plenty of play with my wire these guys they can actually go down in there like that so you could get a really good flush frame because they bend down or up and then you can just wire it like that and make sure that it's kind of your hanger would be kind of sunk down in there when it's on the wall. But these are great. And they're double D rings which have two holes, so they'll be even longer. So you can do those. Double D rings are for bigger pieces and um, 
like doing mirrors or real heavy art, you don't want to use wire. You want to just put a D-ring here and a D-ring here and you'll hang it on two hooks. That way all the pressure is coming on the two sides instead of having a wire in the middle where it's pulling all the D-rings in it can put a strain on the two pieces of molding. So it, these are really neat things and I've done all kinds of other tricky things with them. Um, so where were we? We're doing the fitting. Uh, I'm going to rewire this guy. We got the bump ons. You guys, if you get your own stickers made for your art company or whatever, you can paper it, put that on the back too, so that people know where you got it from, or that you can do that. Preferably, it says Jerry's. Or a business card. Or a business card. Yeah, because yeah. a lot of times people have art hanging in their in their house, and so yeah. be like, "Ooh, I love that piece," and they'll Who be like, it? "I can't remember what her name was." Yeah, yeah. yeah. You have a business card of the artist and a little sticker yep. of where they got it framed, which says Jerry's. <laughs> It's probably good enough. I'll talk about the two hangers. I already mentioned that earlier, why you want to use two hangers instead of one. And this really is as easy as it looks. The glazing points, not so much, and the mat cuts, not so much, but this is pretty simple. It just takes a little bit of practice, and I'm really rusty. I haven't done a full cut. Well, I did one the other day, but I used to do about 30 in a day. All right, so we got it wired. And then we would have our two hooks on the wall, and I explained that if you have one hook, you basically got a pendulum, so the frame can rock back and forth. If you got two hooks, you create that trapezoid shape, and it's not going to rock. Now, leveling them to get them ready to hang, that's on you guys. So uh, uh, my iPhone actually has a level on it, and I've used that where I've put it on the wall, I've got the level, and then put a hanger on one side, hanger on the other, and that's perfect for my two hanging technique. And that is a fitting, and let's see. Yeah, we've done everything. Yeah. We've covered everything. Wow. That was a lot of fun. This actually has museum glass in it. That's how clear it is. <laughs> so, yeah, that was it. Yeah. So We're all done. Yeah, not a problem. Not a problem. Any questions? What do you think about the, the 3M hangers? The 3M hangers? The, the, the adhesive ones? The adhesive ones. I don't like them. Uh, you know, and, and the only reason why they develop that stuff is they're saying, oh, we're going to save your wallpaper and your paint or whatever. Put a hole in the wall. You're going to cover it up with the frame anyway. And if you don't like it later on, you can always putty in the hole and paint back over it. Yeah, and they're made those, to be more temporary than they yeah, are. Yeah, and those adhesive hangers, like any temperature changes and stuff, they can, the adhesive will eventually give way. And if you got something that's valuable hanging on that, and if it has glass that could hit, the glass break, tear your art, you're done. So I never recommend that stuff. Always check for a stud too. You don't want to hang anything heavy if it's just going in the sheetrock because your sheetrock's about that thick. Your nail's going to go like that and eventually just tear through the sheetrock. So it's kind of tricky. If you want to use a nail just in the sheetrock, I wouldn't go anything bigger than probably a 12 by 16 or yeah, something like that. And even then, yeah, yeah. Even with like drywall anchors. Like you can that. do drywall anchors. You had a little blue things you put in there and then screw the guy in and it fans out. Those things are okay. Yeah, they, they work as well, but nothing beats a good hook and a nail. If you're using a sawtooth, I re recommend T nails because the head of a regular nail is small. If you use a T nail, then you got more, after the hook goes down, it'll have the T locking it in more so than a round one where it could bounce off or anything like that. So uh, that's another uh, little tidbit there. Any other questions? Wow, you guys have been great. We should take them to our next episode. I know, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> so thank you all so much. Um, and thank you viewers. Just so you know, again, mm -hmm. this is a Parva series. So make sure you check out our other episodes. Yep. Like, share, comment. If you're near another Jerry's Artorama, we're in the lovely uh, location in Raleigh here. Mm -hmm. um, go in and meet your custom framers. They're yeah. all just as friendly as Sam is. Mm -hmm. um, they want to see your art. So bring your pieces in. Consultations are always free. Yep. So we would love to kind of help you think through your projects. So whether you're looking to just pull something off the shelf and 
make it work on your own or looking to go completely custom, we're here to support you. Yeah. Um, and again, all the products that you see here, you can get it at Jerry's. We're going to be starting some rental programs soon, which we're super excited mm -hmm. about. So you can Logan Matt Cutter. Logan yep. Matt Cutter home yep. or um, a point driver home or something like that. So you can kind of get used to it and yep. try those different tools out. Uh, anything else you want to add, Sam? I just want to say, be careful when you're doing all this stuff. I made it look really easy, and I wasn't even framing today, and I actually cut myself. I don't know how it happened, yeah. but <laughs> always be careful doing this because you can really, really hurt yourself. Beveled edges on mats, worst paper cut. Have a uh, backsplash or some kind of type of support to drive in a, a glazing point. Doing the wiring, which is where I got my cut. I think I got poked by the end of one of the wires. I don't know how that happened. Um, but just be careful. A lot of times, you can wear gloves. I've been doing it so long, so my hands are like, I can stick needles in them. I don't even feel it. They're so calloused over by now. Um, but maybe start with gloves. And uh, when you're using the Logan Matt cutters, uh, be very careful. Make sure you practice several times on just a crappy mat board or something before you actually cut the mat you're going to be using because you are going to make mistakes to start with. And then you'll get better and better once you get used to it and get that eye hand and muscle memory going, then you'll be okay. But in the, before that, you're going to have to practice. And um, same thing doing the wiring on the back. My wiring always looks nice and neat here with the, with the wraps. And, takes a while to get to where you can do that, but it's just, it's just muscle memory and doing it. And I've done these things thousands and thousands of times, so it's like secondary nature to me. But like I said, even the best framers in the world can still get cuts and not know how they do it. Glass, glass will cut you too, so be careful with that. <laughs> um, pulling mat boards, when you go to the mat board bins in stores, we've had customers that cut themselves because they go to pull a mat board. But, that's it. That's all I can think of. Thank you yep. so much for viewing. If you've got any questions, comment below. We hope to see you in our in-store demo soon. Yep. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. <laughs> Take care. Bye.